good risings, good risings, kings, queens, prince, and princesses. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And this is our Bible edification class. And I would love for everybody to get something out of this. God has been good. He has woke you up this morning. It's rising and started you on your way so that you can give him praise. But yes, I would like to thank everybody that's vibing in this morning. And I'd like to thank God for blessing us to see another day. Um, I was just singing a song. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. I said, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. For he is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good. He is worthy, worthy. For he is good. Yes, he is good. But now I ain't going to be before y'all long. I just want to get on here and encourage some people, you know. Let everybody know that everything's going to be all right. Just keep pushing. Just keep going forth in the name of God. Let God do what he does. And you just keep pushing and praising and worshiping him. And, and keeping your mind focused and stayed on him. As long as you are breathing, keep your mind stayed on God. Let these demons know that they have no authority. They cannot control you because your body and spirit, mind and soul is controlled by God. So, yes, keep your mind focused. Keep your mind focused. Do not, do not, I repeat, do not, do not, and you shall not. You shall not give up on this race. But yes, I'm going to go to God in prayer. And today we were speaking on, I'm going to go to God in prayer and then we're going to get right into what we're supposed to be, what we're doing. God in heaven, I come to you thanking you for this rise and thanking you for protecting us while we were laying down asleep. I ask you, God, to forgive us, watch over us, protect us, guide us, lead us, shield us from all hurt, harm, or danger. I ask you to just open up the floodgates of heaven and pour down all the counseling we need to keep pushing and striving and going forth in your name, God. Satan, I rebuke you in the name of God in heaven. God, whatever is your will, let it be done. Watch over everybody on these highways, byways, getting ready to go to work and coming from work. I ask you to just protect them. Uh, touch everybody, Father God, that is uh, uh, wanting to do better at praising you, God. I ask you to just open up these doors. Pour them down on them, God. I ask you to just touch everybody in these hospital beds, on these corners, these homeless people, and these, and the, and these people in the jail cells, and these, and these crazy homes, and all kind of facilities, God. I ask you to just enlighten their spirit with your Holy Ghost, God. Whatever is your will, let it be done. I ask you to touch everybody that's viewing to receive what you have for them out of this message, out of this lesson, God. In the name of God, I rebuke you, Satan. Thank you, God. Amen. Good risings, kings, queens, prince and princesses. How is everybody doing on this hump day? Today is the hump day, the middle of the week. We're almost there. We're almost to one more week down. But God has blessed you to make it this far. And I want you to know that Satan has no authority as long as you keep focused. If you give him any kind of focus, then that's when he controls your mind. And then it turns into your outcome. And then you start doing things that you're not supposed to do. But as long as you stay focused, as long as you stay with your mind on God, as long as you keep your eyes on the prize, as long as you keep your foot to the pedal, as long as you keep on pushing, there is nothing that can stop you. There is nothing that can stop you. There is nothing that can stop you. But 
I ain't gonna keep y'all long. I don't like to be long. I wanna be in and out. You know what I'm saying? I don't wanna be too winded long, you know. But we're gonna get right into this today. We're speaking on numbers. We're in the book of numbers. And then I'm gonna go into uh to a little bit of, of a of a of a of, 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 of a little passage to encourage some people after I go over the book of numbers. But today we're in the book of numbers, we're going to speak about what the book is, where it came from, and things of that nature. The book of numbers is the fourth book of the Bible. A book from the Pentateuch. Remember the we went over this. Yeah, I'm back at it. We back doing talking about uh, uh, the books of the Bible, and then I'm gonna go into some some of this word. First, I'm gonna give this, then I'm gonna go into that. But yes, I want everybody to tune in. I want you to share this. Uh, 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 is 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 it's a good word? I believe if it is to you to share it. But yes, for those that don't know, uh, Numbers is the fourth book of the Bible. It's a a book from the Pentateuch. The Pentateuch is the first five books of the Bible. The Hebrew title has more meaning than the English. The Hebrew title of Numbers has more meaning than the English one does. This is the book of Numbers we're discussing, okay? This book picks up the story of the wilderness wandering after the arrival at Sinai. So this book, it talks about the arrival of uh, after arriving at Sinai. This is the Fourth book of the Bible. We're talking about numbers. Again, we're talking about numbers. Keep 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 up with me. And then I'm gonna go into this passage that I have. This little this little something I want to go over. It's been on my heart. But yes, and then I said I said it's the fourth book of the Bible. It's a book from the Pentateuch. The Hebrew has more meaning than the English. Just the numbers. The Hebrew word numbers has more meaning than the uh, English uh, word. This book picks up the story of the wilderness wandering after the arrival at Sinai. These are, these are the little things about numbers. And then, it, and then it says, the name numbers come from Greek translation, which give a misleading impression of one of the features of this book. Everybody get that? Now we're going to go into some, to some words. I gave you a little bit of numbers. We went over Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, numbers. Next week is going to be Deuteronomy. But now I'm going to go into some what I want everybody to turn with me to. Uh, turn with me to John, the 17th chapter and the third verse. John, the 17th chapter and the third verse. And it says, now this is eternal life. That they know God, that they know you, the only true God. This is eternal life in Jesus Christ, whom I have sent. Come on. This is eternal life, knowing God. Now, the reason I, I wanted to speak on this after we talked about numbers is because people speak on the relationship of 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 or, or their spirituality and they really don't know God or they're really not under the spirit and you can tell if you know God or if you're under the spirit because you will speak it you will smell it you will see it you will perceive everything according to the Holy Spirit like John the 17th chapter, the third verse says, it says, now this is eternal life. If that's the only way to eternal life is to know God and to be asked of who he sent. Mm. So if you do not know God or Jesus Christ, who he sent, how can you say that you are saved and you have or you are uh, on the path to receiving eternal life. Now, look, 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 check this out. Now, look, John, the 17th chapter, in the third verse, you said, now this is eternal life. Now, it's saying that this is life. This is what you are trying to seek. Knowing me is eternal life. Now, check this. So, 
But look, look, I always speak about mental health and counseling and receiving good guidance. Look, check, check, check. Now, to know God, you are under God. And to be under God, you are walking God. And to walk God, that means you perceive things in a matter of how he moves. Now, check this. Galatians, the fourth chapter. Galatians 4, verses 8 through 9. It says, however, at this time, when you did not know God, you were slaves to those which by nature are no gods. Now, look, look, when you, it says, when you receive eternal life is to know God. But when you do not know a God, you were slave to the gods that had no meaning. You had your focus on things that did not last. Is basically what he was saying. He said, with me you will last. I will make you exist. I will give you what you need <laughs> to have and to hold forever. In Galatians, it says that when you were didn't know me, when you did not know me, you slave to the masters that were not according to me. And this is why you get people that are lost. Look, check. You got people that are in these in these church pews and people that listen to the word or say they in the word. But in a passage that I was given uh, last Wednesday, it was talking about how people's heart, their heart was far from God. It's because they didn't know God. They knew who they who, who was teaching God. And they were not trying to get close to God because they were seeking something that was outside of the realm. What are you saying? I'm saying when you are in relation with anything, you spend time with now that Somebody have led you to God. Now it is your duty to let God lead you. They led you to the position to where you can receive and know and get eternal life. But when you start to look at that person's life and want to be like that person, that's where your blessings get blocked. We got to see past. Who's teaching us? We got to see past. If we want to know God, you can't know God and thinking your pastor going to continue to go to God for you. These deacons going to continue to go to God for you. No, you got to know God for yourself. Now, if you do not know God for yourself, you only you and you, you know, be real with yourself. This is where uh, spirituality starts. Being real with thyself. With thyself. If you're not real with thyself, how can you put yourself in position to receive real revelation? So you know if you're right with God, and if you know God, if you know Him, and you know if you don't, this is what happens when you don't. You are slaves to the nature of the land that has no meaning and really does not exist. Forever. Everything on this earth has an expiration date. But when you receive and start to seek and know God, that is when you start to exist eternally. Because like I said, in order to know somebody, you don't know of. You know everything about and plus you know the ins and outs of this person. That's why it says to know God. Is eternal life. And then look, check this. I was looking up some words. I was looking up prudence, knowledge, and wisdom. And, and I looked up wisdom in, in, the, in my Bible dictionary. And it says, in God. So this is why to know God is eternal life. Because you receive wisdom. You become wise of what's among you. But when you're not of God, you are slave to what is around you because you are a see person. You have to see it to believe it. Oh, God going to make you see. 
Let's keep going on in Galatians, the fourth chapter, 8 and 9. It says, however, at that time, when you did not know God, you were slaves to those which by nature are no gods. They ain't gods at all. But now that you have come to know God, or rather be known by God, how is it that you turn back again to be weak? And worthless element things to which you desire to be enslaved all over again. Boom. But check, look, look. That's because you know of God if you go back. He would say, How can you know these things that I have performed? How can you see? Now, 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 I said that once you. You you in the, in, the, in, the, in under the uh, spirit the the, the 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 what I say the world realm you just a person that would like to see things and believe but now look God said I showed you look this before you were up under what I possess and that's power before you were under the power you were slaves to what you seen so I showed you. My cable, I explain, I did all for you to know. And then you go back, but that's because you know of. Because you know of. When you know, when you know, you will experience the power. You will experience that nature is just beneath God but when you are with God you are above nature and above these wanting to be gods because I, I said this Sunday said this on Sunday because you start to walk with a winning team <laughs> now you are walking with a winning team and there is no such thing as losing because you're focusing on winning your counseling is steady getting counseled on how to attack the defenders. You're steady getting built on how to how to perform when the defender comes up against you or your opponent. And that's the anti. Anything that is not of God is anti because you don't believe. Because you are slaves to this world. How can you believe if you haven't changed over? But once you change over, do not go back. Don't be like what he said in Galatians. He said, how y'all know of me? How y'all know that I can do all these things? How y'all know this and y'all still wanting to go back and be weak? When I gave you strength, you asked me for all of these things and I've given them to you. But again, we were speaking on how you get eternal life. Eternal life is big. And people always say, oh, you got it. No, 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 no. John, the 17th chapter in the third verse says, now this is eternal life. That they know you, the only true God. That's eternal life. Once you know God, you live forever. Because you have the counseling to move effective. Now you are in existence. Now you have power. Your strength is not like others because now you have the strength of a God. If you abide in him, he will abide in you. Abide me. Let's join together. If you join with him, he's going to join with you. So, so look, look, if you, if you have the strength of a God, how can you not defeat what is not a God? Wow. If you have the counseling of a God, how can you not be more powerful and more knowledgeable than what is not a God? But this is how we think. This is how we move. But I'm here to tell y'all, once you receive God and you know God, it says right here, you will live eternally. 
your days will go on and on and on and on and on and on. And your knowledge will just keep on increasing. Keep on increasing. Keep on increasing. Because it's, you're seeking. You're wanting the power. Who don't want power? That's why you got these musicians pre pretending they can do things. Because they want power. Who don't want power? God can give you power. Well, hey, if anybody would love prayer, hey, look, we went over numbers. I get, broke down the book of numbers, and then I went into a little, uh, little thing on, a little message on how to receive eternal life and how to exist in forever. And I went to John the seventeenth chapter and the third verse. And it says, now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, in Jesus Christ, whom I have sent. And then I went to Galatians in the fourth chapter, verses eight and nine. But no, if you would like prayer or anything, put it down below. We have prayer uh, first Wednesdays of the month. And we would love to go to God in prayer. And also, I want y'all to stay tuned. We're having a Christmas service, 9 a.m. And be tuned this, this uh, sun, Sunday rising. Bobby and this Sunday rising. But yeah, we will be on here every Wednesday rising at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Central Time, 10 a.m. Eastern. But yes, I love y'all, and I'm about to go to God in prayer, and God bless. God in heaven, I come to you thanking you for this rise, and thanking you for the message and the revelations you gave to me to give to the people. I ask you, God, to touch those that were viewed and bless them to get something out of it. I ask you to bless the ones that are in need of prayer, Father God. I ask you to just touch them them to receive the counseling that they need to overcome all the things that come their way. Bless them to come to you for themselves. We rebuke you, Satan, in the name of God in heaven. God, I ask you to touch everybody in this world. Reveal to us what we need to do to come together. Whatever is your will, let it be done. Bless those that are, have, that are lacking the knowledge. Bless the ones that are seeking the knowledge. Thank you, God. In the name of God, I rebuke you, Satan. Thank you, God. Amen. Hey, y'all have a beautiful Wednesday. Remember, you can do it. Just stay in God. Ask God and believe in it and don't move. Stand on it. Stand firmly on it. But I want y'all to keep your faith up. Build up. Keep reading, praying, and doing what it takes to stay on the winning team. Love y'all. God bless.